Hi everybody, my name is Allison Scott. I'm a research scientist here at PolicyWise for Children and Families. And today we're going to talk about the Community Data Project, also known as CDP website. We're going to do a demonstration. So what we're going to do today is we're going to find and analyze CDP data. So we're going to find and download that data from the CDP website. We're going to manipulate it in Beyond 2020 until we get what we want. Then we're going to export that to Excel and we're going to graph it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was geographies. So as you know, um, Canada has been split up into several different census divisions. And if you look at Alberta, you can see that we've got 19 different census divisions. Ours is Census Division 11. Now that's outlined in red here. And so as you can see, the Census Division 11 stretches from past Drayton Valley to past Millet, up to Redwater, and over to Seba, Be Seba Beach and Parkland County. So you'll also notice that there are small black lines, and those outline the census subdivisions. So for instance, there's the Edmonton census subdivision, Strathcona County, Stony Plain, Fort Saskatchewan, etc. There's also another geography called a census metropolitan area, and that's outlined here in the thick gray line. So something that'll be helpful later on is a little cheat sheet on different abbreviations for geographies. So when you download the data off of the CDP website, um, you often have a choice about which uh, geography levels that you want. So sometimes it, it'll be a provincial territorial or perhaps you'll have the chance of hang it, having it at the census tract level. And so they don't spell those things out, they use abbreviations instead. And so here's the different abbreviations that we use. So let's go ahead and start thinking about how to find data on the CDP website. But to, So if you go to the CDP website, you will see this Find Data button, and that's really where we're going to actually go in and, and look for and search for data. But let's start by looking at a couple of research questions, just to orient us and sort of have some, a product that we can get out at the end. So our first research question is, has the proportion of seniors living outside of institutions changed between 2006 and 2016 in our census subdivision? And the second question we're going to look at is, what proportion of those seniors were considered low income in 2016? All right, so what we're going to do is our goal is going to be to find data tables that contain both age and a measure of low income in 2016. And so these are the keywords that we're going to use. We know we're interested in an individual income. We know that we want it from Census 2016. We know the Census comes from Statistics Canada. And we also know that we want it at the Census subdivision. Now, and, and we also know we want 2016. Now, be careful when you're putting in a lot of keywords. Sometimes that um, can filter out too many. So this is a lot of keywords for right now. And if I didn't find what I needed, I would then start cutting keywords. Um, I would start sort of cutting down different things to actually um, make my search more, more broad. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to end this the presentation and we're going to go directly to the website. So here we are directly at the website. So we know we want individual income. We know that we want the census 2016. We know we want it from Statistics Canada and we know we want it the census subdivision. So I'm going to apply those filters, and we've got four products. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. So we've got four different um, tables that we could use. Now one of the things to look at is what is the population that's in these tables? So if you look at this second one, it says income in 2015, highest certificate, diploma or degree, age group, sex and immigrant status and period of immigration for the population 15 years 
15 years and older over in private households. So this isn't exactly what we want. So we're, this table is only looking at those individuals who are age 15 or over. So if what we want is the proportion of seniors in the entire population of our census subdivision, then this is not going to give it to us. Um, this is the denominator here in this table is just those people who are age 15 or older. So that cuts out this second table and it also cuts out this third table. So then we could go from the first, we could look at the first table and we, look at, we could look at the fourth table. So just a little, um, I ended up choosing this fourth table. As you'll see, it gives us what we're really interested in. But I just wanted to take a minute to tell you what these little numbers mean. Um, so you see how it says visible minority 15, individual low income status six. Those, that 15 and that six and that, you know, those numbers in the brackets indicate the number of different um, categorizations within that variable. So as you can see that you've got age six, that means there's six different, age has spl split up into six different categories. So let's click on this table and look, see what it looks like. All right, so it's from StatsCan. Um, it is from the census, 2016 census and it has census divisions and census subdivisions. And then here, it had these things that are called dimensions. These are actually the variables that are within the table. So if we look at age groups, six, we can see that there's different values here. So there's a total, so all age groups are included in one of these categories. There's those under 15, those 15 years and older, 15 to 24, 25 to 64, and 65 years and older. So this is going to, this table looks like it's probably going to give me what I want because it has a category for seniors age 65 and older. So it also has the census subdivisions. And let's take a look at those low income indicators. So the low income indicators they have here, it has a little bit of a definition of what it is calling a low income status. So here they are have two, they have four different measures. They have the low income measure after tax. They have the low income measure before tax. They have the low income cutoff after tax and the low income cutoff before tax. So we're today going to use the low income measure after tax. And so I'm happy that it's here because that means this is this table is going to work for us. Okay. So let's add this table to cart. Great. Okay, so in my cart right now, you can see that that's where that table is. Okay, so we're going to continue shopping. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our find data tab and we're going to do the same thing but now what we want to do is we want to compare that to 2016. So now, um, not 2016, sorry, to 2006. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to look at the 2006. We're going to use Statistics Canada and we want those census subdivisions and we want data to include 2006. Okay, so let's apply these filters. All right. So we've got six things in our cart. And so once again, let's look at the population. So here we've got the population 15 years and older, 15 years and older for that's for the first data set, the second data set. The fourth data set is also 15 years and older. Fifth data set is persons 15 years and older. So, so far, the only ones that really might fit our denominators are this third one and this sixth one. But if you look at the third one, it's looking at economic families. What we really want is for all persons. And so we want persons in private households. So this sixth one is the one that I chose. So if you go through, you can once again, you can see the variables that are contained within the table. 
we've got age groups. We've got six different age groups. Let's check and see if those age groups give us what we're wanting. And yes, we have a category for those seniors age 65 years and older. Um, and then now let's take a look at income status. So this one has income status after tax. And so um, what they have is the low income after tax cutoff, LICO AT. So that's actually going to match the previous data set because it also had a LICO AT. So it had the low income after tax cutoff. So we're going to be able to compare those two because they're the same, um, they're the same in low income measure. Okay. So now here's those geographies that I was telling you about earlier. So you can see that we can, we have two options about how we want to, which kind of geography level we want. The first one has provinces, territories, census divisions, and census subdivisions. The other one has that CMA, the census metropolitan areas. Um, so what we want is the first one because it has the census subdivisions. We're going to add that to the cart. Okay. So now we've got our two, um, two data sets and we can check out. And so I have to log in. All right, so here we go. We can submit our order. All of this is free. Um, so you'll notice that it says no payment required. So don't worry, you're not having to pay for anything. We're submitting our order. And now we have to download our order on the download page. So now I've downloaded quite a few different um, data sets over the past little while. So you'll notice um, that it's not necessarily going to come up as the top ones in your download cart. And that's because um, it just it ranks it depending on when you first downloaded that data set. So I actually downloaded those data sets quite some time ago. So I have to scroll down into June. And so uh, I've got to find it now. There we go. So this is one of them. Okay, that's that one. So we're going to download that. And I'm going to open that up. Okay. And then we just have to find the other one. There we go, and it's this one. So we're going to download that. And we're going to open it up. Okay, so we've downloaded it. We've got it, the data set open. It's been saved automatically into our downloads folder. Now what you can do is you can now drag and drop that or copy and paste it into another part of your um, of your of your hard drive so somewhere where you actually want to store the data where you'll find it what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up this table and it's automatically going to open up and be on 2020 okay so now we've got it up in beyond 2020 Let's look at the table as it stands right now. So as you can see, uh, we've got the number of males, the number of females, and the total number of individuals by several different low income measures. We've got uh, low income measure after tax, um, before tax, low income cutoffs after tax, and before tax. Okay, so that's great. But this doesn't actually give us what we need to answer our first research question. What we really wanted to answer our first research question was to look at the proportion of seniors in our census subdivision. So let's take a look at this. Let's take this, um, let's take the geography and let's make this table what we want. So we're going to click geography and we're going to drag it so that it is now in the left hand column. So here you see we've got all of the geographies now in the left hand column and we've gotten that by by sex now note if i'd made any restrictions in that low income measure those restrictions would still stay so let's say i had selected that i only wanted to have 
individuals who were considered low income um, after tax. Well, then we wouldn't have the full population of Canada in this first um, in this first cell. It would have been restricted by those individuals who were low income. So now let's look at age. So what we want to do now is we want to put age, switch age and sex. So we're going to do the same thing. So here we go, we've got age now along the top and we've got geography here. So this is great, we're now getting there. We're now able to see age by geography. But this is an awful lot of um, rows, right? So most of these, these are mostly Newfoundland and then we'd have to scroll down 5,000 lines or several thousand lines to, in order to get to Alberta. So what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight geography and then we're going to go to this search icon. Okay, so now we've got that search icon. So what we're going to do now, we're going to look at this geocode geo. Now an easy way to find all of the uh, things within our census subdivision is to use the following code, 4811. So the 48 stands for Alberta and the 11 stands for our census subdivision. So if we put it at reduce, we can see that now we've got all of those census subdivision, um, all of the geographies within our census division. So we've got Wetaskiwin County, we've got Mamio Beach, we've got Thoresby, we've got Stony Plain, we've got um, Edmonton, etc. Okay, so this is great. Um, note that sometimes when I've done this, um, I've accidentally only gotten the overall census division, so this first line. If that happens to you, try doing the search, hitting the search icon again. But instead of um, hitting reduce, hit expand, and that will give you all of the um, all of the census subdivisions within our division. Okay, so this is great. Um, note that you can also search for a particular um, for a particular location. So, for instance, if we could have put in an English description here, and we could have put in, say, Leduc, right, and then reduced, and that would have only given us Leduc County and Leduc, Leduc City here. It would have only given us those two. So, what if we only wanted a few of these? So, what if I only wanted, say, um, the overall numbers? For division, what if I only wanted Leduc um, County and City? What if I just wanted Parkland and Stony Plain, Spruce Grove, Strathcona County, Fort Saskatchewan, Sturgeon County, Edmonton, St. Albert? Um, let's say if I wanted Morinville, and then the what if I just wanted these? What would I do? Well, now I would highlight all of those. Now do the control highlight. So I was doing control click and then click show. And then that will actually just show us only those ones. Another way to get to that is to go in through item. So let's say I had, um, let's say I'd, I could say I could hide this sorry, or only show this one. Let's try this again. Another way, let's say I made a mistake, now I can go back to my search geocode geo and do expand. And once again, I've got all of those subdivisions within our census division. So I can go through and I can reselect, right? So I wanted this one, this one, this one, Parkland County, Stony Plains, Spruce Grove, Strathcona County, Fort Saskatchewan, Sturgeon, Edmonton, St. Albert. Uh, I wanted Morinville. Let's say that's all that I wanted. I could go up into the item menu and I could just hit show. Now if I'd hit hide, I would hide everything that was highlighted. So because I've highlighted the ones that I want, I'm going to click show. Great! So now we've got the data the way we want it, right? We've got those, um, we've got the age groups up here and we've got the geographies here. Now, how are we going to get this out of Beyond 2020 
and into Excel. Well, the easiest, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but the easiest way for me, the way that I found, was to just highlight everything. So I'm controlling, I'm hitting control and I'm clicking. And so as you can see right now, if I copied this and pasted it into Excel, what I would get is that, just those individuals aged 65 years and older. And I would also get, you know, which county they were in. This isn't exactly what I want. So let's go back to beyond 2020. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these things. I want the entire table. And note that you do have to highlight everything because let's say I had not highlighted these. If I was to copy the data and put it into Excel, you see we only have St. Albert, Morinville, and Stony Plain, which isn't what we want. So we're going to go back into Beyond 2020 and we're going to highlight everything. Okay. And now we're going to go Control C and Control V and we've got the entire table now in Excel. Okay, let's make this a little bit easier to see. And now we want the proportion of seniors um, in the different division, in this different geography. So I'm going to make a formula. So if I put an equal sign at the beginning of that cell, it tells Excel, hey, we're doing a formula. So we want to get the percentage of individuals who are age 65 years and older in the entire um, population. So we're going to go, we're going to hit that. And then we're going to divide that by the total. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this formula a little bit. There we go. So now we have, and then we're going to make that a percent. So now you can see that there is 12, 11, oops, 11.5 percent of all the individuals in our census division are age 65 years or older. So percent 65 plus. Okay, so let's continue on and we can just um, drag that formula all the way down. And so you can see that there's actually a significant difference in the proportion of seniors in some of these different um, areas. So overall in the subdivision, um, approximately 12% of the population is senior, are seniors. But here in Stony Plain or in Mournville, in Mournville there's only 8.2%. So sometimes it varies. Okay, so let's highlight that. Okay. Just There's another way we could have done this too. So we used a formula. So we um, said, we said, let's take those individuals who are age 65 years or older, and we're going to divide that by the total population, and then we're going to times it by 100 to get a percent. We could have done something else too. We could have used a different function in Excel. We could have said, let's start the formula, take those number of people who are age 65 years and older, divide it by the total population of that um, geography, and then we could have used this percent sign. Um, and this percent sign automatically um, times it by 100 so that you can get the percent. And then we could have uh, moved that all the way down. Taken that formula and either copied and pasted it or dragged it all the way down. Okay, so one of the things that I should show you, so we're getting, we're getting somewhere, right? So now one of the things that I wanted to tell you about was this top bar. This top bar is kind of the cheat sheet um, when uh, it's pasted into Excel. It's beyond 2020 trying to tell you what all of the other variables are set to. So for instance here, um, we're looking at all genders, not just males, not just females. This is all genders. Um, it's, this is 
all individuals regarding, regardless of visible minority status. This is all individuals, the total, regardless of um, low income status. So this top bar, um, check this top bar because it'll tell you if you've accidentally restricted um, something in your table. Okay, so now let's make a um, let's make a bar graph. So we're going to now go to insert, and we're going to go to bar graph. We're going to go to two D column graphs. Okay, we're going to do that. All right. So now we can see the proportion of seniors in each of these different geographies. Note that right now there's no access titles and we don't actually know what the geographies are. So if we go in and we right click, we can go to select data. And what we can do is we can add the horizontal axis labels. So we can hit edit here and we hit this little button here and then we can select where we want, what axis labels we want. And then now we've got a chart that tells us what is what, right? So we can see this. Now we can go in, we can make a chart, a chart title. So proportion of seniors age 65 plus by geography. We can also go in and we can, um, we can give this a access, a title. Uh -huh. Okay, so access title. So we can do a primary um, vertical axis, and here we can put proportion. There we go. There, now this is a, half, is a good graph. If you want to fiddle with it and make it a little bit pre more pretty, you can format data series here, and this will allow you to make the gaps smaller, which is something I usually like to do. You can always also highlight this and make it bold. I just clicked Control B there, um, so you could bold it or unbold it. You can make it bigger. You can do the same thing here. You can make that bold or smaller. Um, there's lots of different options you can do. Okay, so that is our proportion of seniors age 65 plus by geography. in 2016 by geography. Great. Okay, so now we've got a bar graph of the proportion of seniors by geography. But remember what we really want to do is compare uh, 2006 to 2016. So what we would do is we would go back and we would get our 2006 data, we would open it in, uh, we would open it up in beyond 2020, and then we would get the data as we normally would. But then what we can do is we can make a table. So I'm just going to switch back to the PowerPoint now. Okay. So if we go through the PowerPoint slides, And so you'll notice that I've actually put together a PowerPoint presentation that you can download. This gives you some handy notes, um, you know, ways to, you know, just so you can refer to that easily. All right. So what we're going to do is, so now we could end up make, so then what we would do is we would make this table. And so here you can see that you've got, um, in 2016, you've got the proportion of seniors in each of these different uh, subdivisions. And you can see that you have the same thing in 2016. All right, then we could make a graph. Now what would be really neat would be able to do, would be doing a line graph. Because now we could actually see the change over time. So as you can see, 
in census division number 11, there's been a really slight change, maybe a slight increase in the proportion of seniors over time. And you can see that this is very much um, very similar to what Edmonton has seen. So Edmonton has seen, has had, has been flat. There really hasn't been any growth in the proportion of seniors in Edmonton. Let's look at some of the other areas though. So that dotted gray line is uh, our division, our division number 11. Let's look at Leduc. So Leduc City has had also, um, has had no real increase in the proportion of seniors, but the county has seen a real increase in the proportion of seniors living in private households. So from approximately 11% to 14%. If we then look at other ones, once again that dotted line is the division overall. You can see there's a real increase in Parkland County, in Stony Plain, in Spruce Grove, and you really see it in Strathcona County. Fort Saskatchewan has, um, has not seen the kind of growth that some of the other places have. If we then look at Morinville, St. Albert, and Sturgeon County, you can see that Sturgeon County, St. Albert, Morinville, they've all had an increase. And so we can then start to answer this research question number one. So the question was, has the proportion of seniors living in private residence changed between 2006 and 2016 in our area? And what I would say the answer is, is that while the proportion of seniors in private homes in Edmonton and the census to division overall has increased maybe just slightly in the last 10 years. The increase has been much more dramatic in the county. So for instance, Sturgeon County, Leduc County, Strathcona County. And so in some cases, the proportion of seniors in, those, in the city, so for instance, St. Albert and Stony Plain, has increased in about the same rate. But in some cases, it has re remained relatively flat. So what are the implications of this? So this may have some implications for housing and services for seniors who are not living in an institution. Um, a lot of the increase is occurring in some of the more rural areas. So are there implications now for transportation for seniors? Um, how are they getting, getting into town to go get groceries? Um, this may have implications for, say, home care or for Meals on Wheels. All right, now let's move on to research question number two. What proportion of seniors were considered low income in 2016 in our census subdivisions? All right, so I'm gonna get out of the PowerPoint presentation now so that we can move back to beyond 2020. So this is the data that we have, right? Okay, so we've got our geographies that we're interested in and we've got ages. And then now we want to start looking at low income status. So I'm just going to pull low income status here where geography is for the moment. So we can take an actual look at it. So there's several different low income measures. So for in this moment, I'm just going to look at the uh, low income measure after tax. So there is a not applicable and an applicable. We definitely want our denominator to be those into that the applicables. So we're going to keep low income status applicable because that's the total. It, that includes those who are in low income and who are not in low income. So we're gonna restrict this now because when you put um, this on the top, it, the low income measures on the top, it can be kind of hard to pick them out sometimes. It can be useful to look at it this way. So we're going to go item and we're going to go show so that we're only seeing those things. I'm gonna put that back now and instead grab geography. So now we're once again, we're seeing all of those individuals in all of those age groups, but they're all in those people who are considered um, applicable for that particular measure, low income measure. So what I wanna do now is I only wanna look at those people who are seniors. So I'm gonna only show that one and now I'm gonna go into low income status and put it here. And now what we're seeing is those individuals who are in low income status and the total for those who are seniors. 
So once again, we can select this entire, um, this entire table. We can copy that and we can paste it into an Excel spreadsheet. We can make the columns a little bit more visible. And so let's see what we've got here. Now remember this top line here is telling us what restrictions we have. So we know that we have an, a restriction here. We're only looking at those individuals who are aged 65 years and older. We're not, we're looking at males and females together. We're, we're not worrying about visible minority status or whether they were an immigrant. We are, our only restriction is those aged 65 years and older and the geography restrictions. So now we can look at what proportion of seniors are in low income. So percent of seniors in 2016 who are in low income. Okay, so here we can take, we can do our formula again, in low income divided by the entire population. We can turn that into a percent and then we can drag that and we can all the way down. So you can see here in Stony there. So now we have a nice, um, we have a nice table that we can make a little bit pretty if we want. And we can now, um, we can now chart this if we want. So we do the same thing that we did before. We would insert a bar chart. Okay. And then we would uh, select the data so that we could get those horizontal axis labels. Then here we can add in um, axis titles. I'm going to make this bigger so it's more easily seen. in 2016. Okay, so now we can sort of see that there's a significant difference. So I'm just going to go um, back to the PowerPoint presentation now so you can see what it was that I created. And so here's the graph that I ended up making. So you can see uh, that here for division number 11 overall, 8% of seniors living in private homes were considered low income after tax. Um, but there were some in some um, census subdivisions that actually had significantly higher levels. So if we look at Leduc County and Leduc Township, we can see that they actually had um, close to 10% and 12% of seniors there were considered low income after tax. The next highest was Edmonton with approximately 9%. So, our research question was, what proportions of seniors were considered low income in 2016 in our census subdivisions? And what our answer is, is that an average of 8% of seniors living in private homes in our census division had low income after tax in 2016. But that proportion was higher in Leduc County and Leduc Municipality. So what are the implications of this? So the implications are that the number of seniors living in private homes has increased over time, with some of those largest increases occurring in rural counties. So while 8% of the seniors on average are considered low income, this really varies a lot by geography, with some areas having higher than average rates of after-tax poverty.
in those seniors living in private homes. And so this may have implications for the types of programs and services offered for seniors. So low-income seniors living in rural areas may have additional transportation challenges, which may lead to lower use of existing social services available in towns and municipalities. So I hope you found this useful. Um, I've got Here's a few handy resources. Um, so there's a really good flash demonstration of Beyond 2020. It's very clear and comprehensive. I highly suggest it. And then there's, um, there's a description of the census geographies here at this link. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this because I know I sure have. Have a great day.